everybody welcome back to plus one biology you know the living world is the first chapter in your textbook actually this chapter some portions i mean the taxonomic aids one topic has already deleted from your syllabus okay but the first half of the chapter is given it's a very small chapter its first half is given very basic concepts about the life the living organisms its organization like so let us discuss that topics today okay ready so tell me what are the characters of living organisms what makes us unique when we compare to a non living thing tell me what's the difference between a non living substance and a living being hmm? yeah when we see ultimate to the molecular level we can understand that if we get i mean if we take our body our body is made up of the molecules like carbon hydrogen like okay the atoms atomic level molecular level when we speak they may be similarity okay the non living things are maybe they also made up of carbon hydrogen like compounds okay then tell me what is the major difference between i'm not speaking the molecular level the physiological level the functional level what are the differences between a living thing and a non living thing hmm you can suggest a lot many things no you are learning this all things from lower classes onwards so living organisms grow non living things cannot grow okay living organisms respire non living things cannot we take food and digest the non living things cannot we reproduce whereas the non living things cannot like you can state a number of uh, processes number of differences right then we are just cross checking some of the differences what are the unique features of living things we are going to discuss okay anyway you know living organisms perform number of metabolisms we digest we take food and digest it we respire and oxidize it like okay oxidize food this all things you know then but this cannot be shown by a non living thing okay but we can show this in a laboratory when we do this digestion in a laboratory test you that it is not life inside okay so we cannot say the metabolism is a unique i mean a specific feature of living thing okay it is not a fundamental property of living thing it can be demonstrated outside in a lab we can do this reactions we can do in a lab okay so the metabolisms all whatever you think as all metabolisms we can demonstrate outside so these are not considered as a fundamental property of life okay similarly growth we when we consider okay there are organisms which cannot grow still okay living things grow but non living things also grow you might have heard okay mountains growing sand mounds growing like some non living things also grow so we cannot take growth as a fundamental feature of life fundamental property of life okay reproduction can we take reproduction as a fundamental property of life hmm? do all the living organisms reproduce there are infertile organisms which cannot reproduce one organism itself you know mu produced by crossing horse and donkey it cannot reproduce is infertile like there are infertile organisms living organisms so we cannot say growth reproduction and metabolism we cannot say they are fundamental properties of life then tell me which can be called as fundamental properties of life only a living thing exhibit that property then we can call it as fundamental property tell me as an example of fundamental property of life anybody think of it think of it yeah see when we speak anything to have a life it should have minimum one cell a living organism for showing life it should contain minimum single cell so cellular organization is considered as a fundamental property of life 
because anything less than a cell has no life. Okay, for life minimum one cell is required. Okay, so see one important fundamental property of life is what? Cellular organization. And another fundamental property of life. Tell me, you got it already, right? Uh, living things are conscious. That means they show consciousness. Okay, if there is minimum one unicellular bacterium, it's able to sense its surrounding. It's okay, it is showing some sort of uh, response to stimuli. So understand, consciousness is another fundamental feature, fundamental property of living organisms. Not growth, not reproduction, not any of the metabolic activities, but cellular organization and consciousness, response to the stimulus. Okay, these are the two unique fundamental properties of life. I think it's clear, very easy concept. Everybody know this. Okay. Let's move to the next topic. Just what is meant by living things you have understood. It should have minimum a cell. They are conscious to the surroundings. Okay, the stimuli. Okay, they are responding to that. And they show growth, reproduction and they show number of metabolic activities. Okay, whatever. We may have, we are familiar with number of diverse living organisms around us. Right? Okay, you may be wondering, you may be sometimes experimenting or researching or observing many organisms in the surrounding. Okay, a vast variety of plants, animals and microbes are there in the nature. Okay, are there in the nature? We can call this as biodiversity. Then what is biodiversity? Hmm? Diversity in the living organisms. It represents a plant group, animal group and microbes. Okay, the number of different types of plants, animals and microbes represent the biodiversity. Okay, and you have a chapter next year in plus 2 related to biodiversity. Anyway, which is the branch of biology which deals with this diversity? Different types of organisms and their interrelationship. Which branch deals with this? That is taxonomy. So taxonomy deals with the biodiversity and the different types of organisms and their relationships, different interactions like. Okay, this all are coming under this, all are coming under taxonomy. Then tell me what is mainly there in this branch taxonomy? What did taxonomists do? Huh. So understand whenever there is a new plant or new organism, anything observed or identified, what they do? Based on the characters, they try to identify the organism and they try to group them into which group it fits. Okay, right. That means a taxonomist work mainly, we can say, characterize this major process are they. The taxonomy is having the main four processes. These four main processes, characterization, nomenclature, identification and classification. In 9th standard you have studied is a branch of biology which deals with this. Okay, this processes and classification you have defined is a grouping of organisms based on the similarities, dissimilarities. Like a taxonomist works are this thing. That is what a taxonomist do. Characterize, identify, name and classify the organisms based on their characters and the similarities and dissimilarities. Simple fact. Okay, so the taxonomy deals with characterization, nomenclature, identification and classification of organisms. Okay, then out of this, the nomenclature. We have to stress on this nomenclature. What do you mean by nomenclature? Huh? Giving, process of giving scientific names to organisms. Why there is the requirement, scientific names, why is required? Hmm? You are very familiar. Even in our Malayalam when we uh, tell one, uh, I mean one name for one fruit in a different, uh, I mean place, in say in Kerala itself is given another name. Okay, that this type of names are called vernacular names. The local names are called vernacular names. Okay, vernacular names cannot help 
to identify the organisms proper properly in different places. These names are, I mean, restricted to a locality only. Okay, so scientific names are must for a universal understanding, a universal understanding. So understand, the vernacular names may vary from place to place. So for universal understanding, scientific names are must. So what we call Gupta in one language is different in another area. Another place. Okay. Maybe in a different language it gives a different different object maybe. So understand. Scientific names are must. Okay. There are so many attempts of naming. Scientific naming. Polynomial nomenclature. Trinomial nomenclature. Like in polynomial nomenclature the name itself has many parts. That gives the somewhat a clear description of the organism. But now we focus on Binomial nomenclature, we are following binomial nomenclature. You know who has introduced the binomial nomenclature? Tell me, tell me who introduced binomial nomenclature? The father of taxonomy, Herolus Linnaeus. The father of taxonomy, Herolus Linnaeus, introduced what? Binomial nomenclature. And according to binomial nomenclature, the scientific name of an organism has two epithets, two parts. Okay, the first part of the name is the name of the genus and the second epithet, the second part of the name is the name of the species. For example, Homo sapiens. Okay, Homo sapiens mean scientific name of human. Homo indicates the genus name. Okay, to which genus it belongs to and the sapiens indicates the species name. Okay, the scientific name of an organism consists of two names, genus name and species name and with these two names only the name become meaningful. Okay, otherwise I just give an example. See, if a panther of the genus name Aron given, we cannot identify that organism. He was added with the Leo, the species name. This is lion. Okay. Similarly, he was the genus name tigress added with that. It is tiger. Okay. Just understand, if both the names are given, then only it's meaningful. So, identifying organisms like this with the two names is called binomial nomenclature. The first name is the genus name and the second name is the species name. And which name is specific, which gives the exact organism is the species name. Okay, species name is specific. Okay, genus name, Homo neanderthalensis is there. Okay, like so many names are there, but here if it is coming along with the species name, it is specific. If Leo comes along with Panthera, it is specific, it's lion. Okay, that means the species name is the specific name. Okay, so let's discuss the rules of scientific naming. When we write the scientific names, see the first letter of the genus name, the first epithet should be capital letter. Whereas the first letter of the specific name, second epithet should be starting with the small letter. First letter of genus name should start with the capital letter, whereas first letter of species name should begin with a small letter. And this name should be separately underlined. When it's handwritten, it should be separately underlined. And mostly the scientific names are in Latin. If not, it should be Latinized. Okay? These are the major rules of scientific namings. There are so many other rules, the basic rules only we discuss here. Then, see, normally the author's name can be written in abbreviated form at the end. Mangifera indica, mango. Okay? Then, it is attached with the, the abbreviation lin. Means, Mangifera indica was described by Linnaeus. That should not be underlined. Okay, so Mangifera indica, mango, scientific name of mango. Lin means Linnaeus is abbreviated from 
he is the man who described this plant name for the first time. Okay, so that's about the scientific naming binomial nomenclature. Keep in mind the first name is genus name, the second name is species name. You have already studied it, so it's easy, I think. The only thing new is what the author's name is in abbreviated form. It is attached as a suffix. Okay, it is not necessary, it is, it is not underlined. These two names should be separately underlined. Okay, names are in Latin, otherwise any other language which is usually converted to Latin, Latinized. Okay, so that's about the binomial nomenclature. Then about the taxonomic categories. We had a discussion in the bridge course section. Anyway, for the new students especially. See, this is the hierarchical arrangement of various taxonomic categories. There are seven main fundamental taxonomic categories. The categories are species, genus, family, order, class, division of phylum and kingdom. These are the seven fundamental taxonomic categories. Okay, we can group an organism, so an organism a particular species, it belongs to a particular genus, can be grouped under a family. This family can be grouped under a, uh, an order, this order can be grouped under a class, which can be under a division, which can be under a kingdom, like we can categorize, we can uh, include that organism to different, different higher ranks. Okay, so we can say the hierarchy, we can define taxonomic hierarchy as the hierarchical arrangement of various taxonomic categories. Okay, the taxonomic categories are also known as taxa. Okay, so the hierarchy, lower to higher. Okay, like this we arrange of higher to lower. The hierarchical arrangement of various taxonomic categories is called taxonomic hierarchy. Then this is one category, another category, it's higher category like Okay, the categories can be also called taxa. Singular term is taxon. Okay, so which are the seven taxa? Species, genus, like. Okay, then singular term species is a taxon. Genus is another taxon. Okay, family is another taxon, like. Okay, singular term is taxon, plural is taxa. There are seven uh, prime taxa. We will discuss one by one. Okay. Then anyway, understand this arrangement is called taxonomic hierarchy. Okay, let us discuss one by one about the different categories for different taxa. Okay, the lowermost taxon species. The first taxon, the lowermost taxon species. How can we define a species? It's the lowermost taxon. Okay, huh? include a species include. Group of individuals with fundamental similarities. All members of one species are showing almost all basic characters same. Similarities are maximum in the species but least among the individuals of kingdom. Okay, individuals of one species show maximum similarity whereas individuals of animal kingdom, one kingdom, a lot many diversities. Okay, so similarities will go on decreasing from bottom to top, but number of individuals go on increasing. That's why the pyramid is like, okay, number of individuals go on increasing from bottom to the top, but similarities goes on decreasing. Maximum similarity we can see in species. Here members show difference. Okay, we are not similar to tiger, like animal kingdom we belong to. Okay, anyway, then listen here, a species is a group of individuals with fundamental similarities which can interbreed among themselves. They can reproduce among themselves. Okay, so a species is defined as, a biological species is defined as a group of individuals with fundamental similarities which can interbreed among themselves. Example for a species, Homo sapiens is a species. When you write the species, we don't write the name sapiens along. These biological species are written like this only. Homo sapiens is a species. Okay. Then panthera tigris is a species. 
Okay. Then plants group. Solanum. Solanum tuberosum is a species. Solanum tuberosum is potato. Okay. Then Solanum melanchina is brencha. Is another species. Solanum melanchina is another species. Okay. Then See, Pantera leo is another species, like number of species. Cocos nucifera, coconut, mangifera indica. Okay. Like so many species, they can interbreed among themselves, they can reproduce among themselves, they have fundamental similarities. Mangifera indica, almost the same appearance, same type of fruits for every mangoes. Cocos nucifera, almost the same characters, they have no fundamental similarities. Okay. Let's move to the next group that is what is genus. The second group, I mean the second taxon, genus. Plural, plural word is genera. A genus is a taxon with related species. Okay, a genus is a taxon with related species. Okay, somewhat similar species are placed under same genus. For example, Panthera is a genus with Related species like Leo, Tigris, Panthera, Padus, Leopard, etc. Okay, the genus is Panthera. It has related species like Leo, Tigris, Padus. Okay, Panthera, Leo is Lion, Panthera, Tigris is Tiger, Panthera, Padus is Leopard. Okay, similarly, Solanum under plant session, Solanum is a genus. Okay. Which has related species like Solanum tuberosum. Solanum tuberosum is potato. Solanum melangina. Solanum melangina is brinjal. Solanum lycopersicum is tomato. Okay, these three related species are under same genus. So, how can we define a genus? A genus is an assemblage of some. Related species. Okay, simple. To genera with its related species. Our next taxon is family. In a similar sense, how can we define family? A family is an assemblage of related genera. Okay, many related genera are placed under the same family. Okay, for example, the Panthera. Panthera is coming under the family. Felidae. Felidae is a family. In which which genus comes? Panthera comes. Okay. And it also has another genus, related genus, Phyllis, cat family. Okay. Just understand. Not only this, again are there. Just understand. Two related genera are placed under, I mean, related, just understand. Related genera are placed under same family. So, Felidae is an animal family group name in which Panthera, genus Panthera comes under, genus Felis, cat family, okay. Felis comes under, okay. Then example for a plant family, Solanaceae. Okay, Solanaceae. In Solanaceae only the genus Solanum comes under, and another genus, Betura, comes under Petunia. Okay. So just understand, two or more, I mean not two, more related, some related genera are placed under same family. So a family is composed of members of related genera. An assemblage of related genera. Example, Felidae is an animal family with the two these two genera, Panthera and Phyllis, are placed under Felidae. Then Solanum and Detura, this genera are placed under same family, Solanaceae. Next taxon is order. Order is the next rank, higher rank of family. Similar way we can define an order is a group of uh, many related families, an assemblage of related families. Okay? Then it was example for an animal order, carnivora. Okay, carnivora is an order in which 
Felidae. The family Felidae comes under. And also the cat family, dog family. Canidae. Dog family Canidae comes under. So we can say the families like Felidae and Canidae come under the same order Carnivora. An order comprises uh, many related families. Okay. Similarly, the plant session, polymonials, not polynomials, polymonials. Okay. Polymonials is the order in which Solanaceae come under and Convolvulaceae come under. Another example. For family. Okay. Then so families like Solanaceae, then Convolvulaceae. Okay, just study the names. No way these names are there in your textbook. Families like Solanaceae, Convolvulaceae are coming under same order polymonies. But the order consists of some uh, families which have some resemblances, related families. The animal families, Felidae and Canidae, come under Carnivora order. Plant families, Solanaceae, Convolvulaceae, come under plant order Polymoniales. Okay, the names are a little bit tough. You need to study, sit and study, write and study. Okay. The fifth one, class. Similar way, class is an assemblage of related orders. Many related orders are placed under one class. Okay, for example, class mammalia. You are familiar, this name is your family. Okay, class names. Class mammalia comprises one order just now you have studied. Carnivora. Okay, then another order. Primata. Primata. Human beings come under primata, the order. So, related orders come under same class. For example, class mammalia consists of carnivora, the dogs, cats, everything come under, the tiger, lion, everything. The primata, apes, monkeys, human beings all come under. These two orders are placed under mammalia, not only these two orders. Anyway, related orders are placed under same class. So the class name is, animal class name is Mammalia. Here, Carnivora, Primata, like animal orders are placed. The next one, plant class. Dicotyledony. Familiar name, you know Dicotyledony, Monocotyledony, this all your name, familiar. See, Dicotyledony is a plant class. In which the various orders like the various orders like polymonials, I mean the solanomol comes under this order, sapindales, our mangifera, mango, this all under, come under this group. Okay, then keep in mind these things you have to study two animal orders, two plants order. Okay, plants orders. Then see. Carnivora and Primata. Carnivora and Primata are two animal orders placed under class Mammalia. Similarly, Polymonials and Sapintales are two plant orders placed under Dicotyledonae, the plant class. Okay? Study anyhow, write and study, okay. Sixth one, it is division, we give the name for plants and it was add So division or phylum. So example for a phylum, okay, you are familiar. Phylum chordata, phylum chordata consists of Class Mammalia, one class already you are familiar. Other class, you know, Reptilia. So, all classes you know, Amphibia, Fishes, all classes you know. 
Anyway, just keep in mind the animal classes Mammalia, Reptilia are placed under animal phylum. Okay. Animal phylum chordata. So, a phylum is a assemblage is an assemblage of related animal classes a phylum is an assemblage of related animal classes example phylum chordata has the classes like mammalia reptilia etc amphibia so many things you know that then about the division plan session division Division angiospermae in plant angiospermae, gymnospermae, these are all divisions. Okay. Division angiospermae in plants comprises classes like uh, dicotyledonae. One class already you have studied the name now. Other one monocotyledonae. So very very simple. So classes. Monocotyledonae, dicotyledonae are placed under the division angiospermae. Okay, so this is about the sixth rank division or uh, phylum. Phylum in the case of animals, division in the case of plants. So, give examples for division angiospermae. The one and no gymnospermae, tribophyta, dendrophyta, everything you know. Then, so division angiospermae has classes like dicotyledonae, monocotyledonae. Okay, division and the phylum chordata has classes like mammalia, reptilia, etc. Okay, then the highermost rank, the kingdom. There are in between, there are super, okay, uh, super class, subclass, super order, suborder, like other taxa, I mean, categories are there, but this are the Fundamental main categories. So kingdom. Everybody know animal kingdom. Okay. 500 classification we have discussed already. Then plant kingdom. So animal kingdom consists of what? The phyla like. Mm. Mammalia we have. I mean, the phyla like. Chordata. Another phylum. Any other phylum? So many phyla you have studied. So, arthropoda, another phylum. Okay. Chordata, phylum arthropoda. Plantae, kingdom plantae, so animalia. Kingdom plantae comprises divisions like angiospermae, hmm, gymnospermae, bryophyta, so many things, everything you know. Just write this. Angiospermae, just study this. And gymnospermae. So, kingdom plantae has divisions like uh, angiospermae, gymnospermae. The plant divisions angiospermae and gymnospermae are placed under the kingdom plantae. The animal phyla like chordata, arthropoda, etc. are placed under kingdom animalia. So that's about the taxonomic hierarchy and its details. And anyway, you have to study to each examples of every rank. Okay, species two examples. Genus, two examples, general, two examples, families, two examples, order, two examples. At least two each are given in your textbook. It's all names you have to study. And you have to keep in mind how the order is. Never either change and make the confusion. Study thoroughly. Okay. And here I have given uh, two examples. It's namings like this. This is Triticum eastivum wheat. Okay. Triticum eastivum is a scientific name of wheat. It belongs, genus is Triticum. Then its family is Poaceae, its order is Poales, belongs to the class Monocotyledonae, belongs to Angiospermae, the division, then Plantae is the kingdom. Okay, then Masa Domestica. Masa Domestica is housefly, scientific name of housefly. It belongs to the genus Masa, then family Masidae, then Order Diptera, class Insecta, then Phylum Arthropoda, and then Kingdom Animalia. Okay, so this way two names I have just given here. Then similarly you need to study Mangifera Indica. Okay, Mangifera Indica genus name Mangifera. Its species 
I mean, its family is Anacardiaceae. Then its order is Sapintales. We have just listed out the area. Sapintales. And it belongs to Dicotyledonae of Angiospermae plantae. Few names here. Middle session you have to learn. Study Anacardiaceae. Then Sapintales. Mango. Similarly, one more name to study. Homo sapiens. Human being. Homo is the genus. Then Hominidae is the family name. Hominidae. Then our order we uh, have already discussed. Primata. Primata is the order. We belong to the class. Class Mammalia. Then we belong to the phylum. Chordata and Animalia. So Homo sapiens. Homo genus. Family Hominidae. Then uh, order Primata, Class Mammalia, then Phylum Chordata, Kingdom Animalia. This way you need to learn these four examples. One is wheat, other one is Massa Domestica Housefly, then is Homo sapiens Human, then Mangifera Indica Mango. These four are listed out in your textbook. You need to study this. Okay. Then I will give a time to study and I will make a short objective test then everybody learn it thoroughly. Okay, see you in the live session. Thank you.